Oh, you surprised me. I didn't see you there. Welcome to the lab. I'm just finishing up, so perfect timing. Um, I'm glad you get the opportunity to learn a little bit about what we do. Let's go. My name is Mauro Longoni and I'm a research fellow at the Pediatric Surgical Research Laboratories. I joined this laboratory in 2007 when I finished my clinical and molecular genetics training in, at the University of Milan. Mauro, could you please explain some of the genetic studies being performed to identify genes involved in congenital diaphragmatic hernias? So the genetics of CDH is pretty complex, but fortunately here at Mass General we have some of the best scientific know-how in the world. And we're able so, to tackle this problem from different perspectives. For instance, uh, we are currently running a race CGH experiment to determine whether gains or losses of genetic material, so-called microduplications and microdeletions, are responsible for CDH, at least in a certain number of cases. Also, we started a few um, next-generation whole sequencing, whole exome sequencing uh, projects, which allow us to sequence virtually every letter of every gene in the whole genome and that will help us with better diagnosis of this patient. I'm uh, here to say a hearty hello to Don uh, Williamson and all the members of the, this very uh, world famous Cherubs organization and thank you for all that you do for our children with congenital diaphragmatic hernia and particularly uh, all that you've done to help uh, our laboratory in its uh, large um, um, effort to clone uh, and discover genes that are responsible for causing con congenital diaphragmatic hernia. And genes discovered by using uh, the modern tools of genetics, genomics, and bioinformatics as Dr. Mauro Longoni just described. Uh, are being used in the lab to, uh, with the hopes of creating therapies that could alleviate the symptoms uh, and the lethality of the congenital diaphragmatic hernia that affects the patients that you hold so dear. Such therapies we, we think will first be used after birth, once we discover them, um, to improve lung development, hopefully making it unnecessary to put the children on extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. And then subsequently, we would like to be able to use these therapies in the late stages of fetal development to improve the lungs even more. So all we'll have to do in the repair of these children after birth is to close a simple hole in the diaphragm. And as you all know, it's not the hole in the diaphragm that affects these children and makes the, disease, the defect so um, um, mortal, but it is the underdevelopment of the lung. It is very interesting that all the studies that um, we have done now on families with more than one child affected with CDH are strongly pointing us toward molecular pathways involving retinoic acid. And many of you have contributed uh, to these families. We now have to figure out ways to make 
retinoic acid uh, safe for newborn infants and uh, the late stage fetus so that we can improve lung development uh, so as not to have to uh, place these children at all on ECMO. And multiple genes that we find to be affected in uh, human families or in animal models are being resequenced in all the children with congenital diaphragmatic hernia. And as a result of your contributions, your efforts, and your participation in the study, we have DNA uh, and or cell lines on close to 500 patients with uh, congenital diaphragmatic hernia and close to 750 family members, each of whom contribute to helping us together find, we hope, uh, viable treatments uh, in the future for congenital diaphragmatic hernia. So we have a ways to go, but we have lots of clues and we have lots of uh, modern genetics uh, and genomic and bioinformatic tools uh, that are pointing us toward uh, what we think will be viable therapies. So thank you very much for all that you do for us. Hi everyone, I just wanted to say thank you so much for your generous donation and for your commitment to our CDH research study. For those of you I haven't met, my name is Megan Russell and I'm a member of the CDH study team. I just wanted to tell you about how we have used a mouse model to gain insight into diaphragm development and CDH. We've collected specimens from early and late diaphragm development from mice and we have identified a number of different genes and pathways that are critical for proper diaphragm development and we assume that when these are perturbed they're going to result in CDH. So we've gained an enormous amount of information that now we're going back to our, our patients and we are looking to see whether or not these are associated with their CDH. So I just wanted to say thanks again and have a wonderful night and see you next summer. I hope you've enjoyed watching our video. My name is Adam Tracy and I am the newest member of the CDH study group. I came here a year and a half ago after graduating from Bowdoin College with a focus in genetics. Uh, many of my days are spent at this very lab bench uh, conducting the various experiments that Moro, Dr. Donahoe, and Megan explained to you earlier. As someone who aspires to go to medical school in the future, um, this working in this lab is a very rewarding experience. I believe that a firm understanding of genetics is the future of medicine, and I'm confident that what we are doing in this lab um, is and will have a strong impact on the well-being of patients affected with CDH. Thank you, and have a wonderful evening.